Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about not comparing yourself to other medical coders. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so if you are a medical coding student, a brand new medical coder, or a veteran medical coder, this episode is for you. It's about not comparing yourself to other people. When we compare ourselves to others, as far as like knowledge and, and how fast we pick up a particular subject in medical coding, it can lead us down two very different paths. And on these paths, uh, we find ourselves either really feeling bad about ourselves or really having an inflated sense of ego that shouldn't even be, all right? So the thing with uh, comparing yourself and, and trying to look around and see who knows what you're wasting time when you do something like that because it leads to feelings of inadequacy or again, it'll lead to an inflated sense of ego. With medical billing and coding or even just medical coding or medical billing, we all have different talents and different knowledge bases. And just because somebody is coming in with a, um, a background of medical already, and I will hear this a lot from medical coding students who write into the channel and say, Blue, there's a nurse in my class and I'm just intimidated because I know that they know medical terminology and anatomy and I don't. What should I do? In that case, you're going to have to learn medical terminology and anatomy, right? So that you can better understand what you're doing. You know, medical terminology and anatomy <laughs> is so key to what we do. It is key to selecting correct codes. It is key to selecting the correct procedures. It is the key to everything and unlocking that medical terminology knowledge is just the beginning. But even as a nurse, somebody who is a nurse, they can still struggle to learn medical billing and coding. Now, remember, doctors often don't understand what we are saying as medical coders. So that should help you to understand that this is not an easy thing for anybody to get. It takes a lot of effort to do what we do to build up the knowledge base that we we all have or that we should have. <laughs> um, and if you haven't been building your knowledge base, maybe you've stopped studying, you've got your certification and you say, oh, well, I have my job. I don't need to study anymore. This is where you set yourself up to fail because it's important. Everything that we touch and everything that we do is going to affect somebody. In, in this industry, if you code improperly, the provider is affected, the facility is affected, and so is the patient because they have to pay um, either a high fee or a really low fee depending on what did you code. So that's why education is so key to everything. <laughs> um, but when you are sitting there saying, well, so-and-so knows this and so-and-so knows that, do you know that you're wasting time? You're literally wasting time in the fact that you could actually be Staying in your lane, if you've never heard that expression, stay in your lane means you stay on your own course. You don't look around. You're not trying to get into somebody else's lane. You're not trying to see what they're doing. You need to pay attention and concentrate on what you have in front of you. Because trust me, that's enough. That is completely enough because everybody has different things on their plate. And for us to be able to balance everything and to make sure that we are on the ball with our own learning, we need to make sure that we stay focused on ourselves and our own knowledge base, not looking at what so-and-so is doing, not looking at their education, not looking at all the credentials that they have, because somebody with a string of credentials, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a lot of knowledge. For some, it just means that they can pass an, a test, right? A test that you pay for and you can just pass it. It does not translate oftentimes to equal knowledge. Uh, in being able to do whatever they're certified in. So just keep that in mind as well. I went for 13 plus years with only one certification and I ran circles around people who had uh, <laughs> a whole line of credentials after their name because they were just really good at taking tests. And uh, whereas I had actual hands-on knowledge because I was concentrating on my knowledge and I was concentrating on educating myself because I understood that when we are in this industry, that we have to be able to learn a lot. 
and just saying that, oh, well, I only have my certification is not an excuse. Well, I don't have a degree or I'm not a provider. It doesn't matter. You have to be able to understand what they are writing because this is the field and this is our industry. For us to know this, again, it is crucial <laughs> to what we do. But comparing yourself to other people can really slow down your own progress. It can give you those feelings of inadequacy that wouldn't normally be there if you were paying attention to what you were doing. So that's why I say when you are studying, um, I would stay away from study groups unless you find a study group of people that are on the same path as you. And oftentimes that's hard to find because people have different ideals uh, and ideas of what a medical coding career is. So that's why you have to be very careful about who you share your journey with. And because going with the wrong pack of people uh, can lead you down different paths, guys. And so that's why I say stay in your own lane. Focus on what you know you need to learn. And if you feel inadequate because there's a nurse in your class and you say, well, they all know about medical terminology and anatomy, then that's where you need to study. Look at the things that you feel most deficient about. Is it, the is it the medical terminology and anatomy or is it just looking up the codes, the diagnosis codes with the CPT codes or the ICD-10 PCS codes? That right there tells you, okay, that's where I need to focus. Is it evaluation and management? Again, that's where you need to focus. If that's where you feel the weakest, that's where you need to concentrate on studying. There are a lot of resources out there on the internet and the biggest one being free, number one, <laughs> and number two, it's very central to everything that we do as medical coders is the CMS website, cms.gov. There is the Medicare Learning Network. There's a lot of downloadable resources um, that you can download for free. You can do all your research, anything that you want to do. It has evaluation and management. It has a booklet on the Global Surgical Package. It has everything that you need to know on the Medicare Learning Network. And even if your facility does not use Medicare or your doctor's office does not take Medicare, which that would be weird, but, <laughs> uh, but if they don't, if you don't worry about that, um, that website is, is uh, or that organization, CMS, is the one that many in insurances will model themselves after. So that is why it is very important to pay attention to what they are doing uh, and learn from them because again, these insurances are going to model themselves after the one that is most conservative, which is CMS, right? So that's just something, a little tidbit out there. <laughs> if you are stuck, if you need somebody to help you or, or tutor you, look for a mentor or look for a tutor. My calendar is currently closed until January the 1st of 2023. So I do not have any availability at all right now. Um, but there are plenty of tutors on LinkedIn uh, that you can find. And I'm sure if you are a member of the association, you can find somebody in the association who is a tutor as well. Um, or you can always post on LinkedIn that you're looking for a tutor. And that way you can get recommendations on somebody that can help you to understand. Sometimes that's all we need is for somebody to explain it to us. And oftentimes in these programs where we have a bunch of people all like in a Zoom meeting <laughs> and uh, everybody's asking questions. It's really hard um, to, you know, make a point when you're in those types of classes. So if you, your teacher is taking too long to get back to you, again, that would be my recommendation to reach out to somebody and find help. But again, uh, keeping yourself in line as far as you, that you need to pay attention to yourself and you need to pay attention to what you're learning and how you're learning it and not comparing yourself is gonna save you a lot of heartache. When you have yourself comparing yourself to other people, it's really easy to start getting really down on yourself. But you never know what that person with more knowledge or more credentials or more experience doesn't know. And sometimes for some people, they talk a really good game because they can say, oh yeah, I know this, I know this, I know this, and if they see somebody feeling like, and you can see the energy coming off of somebody that when they feel that inadequacy and some people thrive on that and they just say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to make this person feel really bad because it makes me feel good. And so that's why 
you have to be careful about who you listen to. Because sometimes, like I said, people can talk a good game, but not really know what they're doing, right? So when you are out there and you're trying to figure this stuff out, again, do your research and let your fingers do the walking. <laughs> uh, look on CMS, look, um, look up in your, in your book itself. Uh, and that way you can try to understand these books a lot better. When it comes to the, to the manuals, the ICD-10-CM manual, the CPT manual, um, the ICD-10-PCS, if you are uh, working on that inpatient side, or even the hicks picks manual, the problem is a lot of people don't take the time to actually open the books and actually look at all the pages. They just want to magically be able to uh, get in there and start learning how to code, but that's not the way that it works. There's a lot of additional information that is available in these books. There's abbreviations, there are um, modifier explanations, like especially in the CPT manual. There's a whole appendix on that. Um, there's a whole appendix in the CPT manual on evaluation and management um, vignettes, right? So, so that's something that you can look at if you're, again, if you're struggling. And reading those ENM guidelines, again, will help you uh, to better get where you're going. And once you start being worried and concerned with yourself, all of that excess energy that was just nervous and, oh, all these other people know this stuff and I don't, is going to go right away. It's going to go away and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I had to sneeze. So it's allergy season here, by the way. Uh, but anyway, um, when you are doing that, again, it will help you because then you'll get more comfortable and more familiar with your book. I talk all the time about study tips and how to make yourself better as far as being a better medical coder, the things that you can read. And a lot of times it's going to take additional time uh, from, from your work. Uh, if you are working as a medical coder right now, or maybe you're working as a medical biller, uh, it's going to take some time outside of work in order for you to really augment your studies and be able to understand what's really going on. This does not last forever, guys, like this always having to study and that kind of thing. It doesn't last forever, but it does help in the beginning because the book coding and real world coding are two different things. Okay, so that's just something that you all need to know. And keeping yourself disciplined and minding your own business, basically, <laughs> and, and learning on your own is a really great thing, right? Rather than trying to drag this person in and that person in and trying to get their opinions. Because a lot of times that's really what, what, they, what it is, is this their opinions or giving you their opinion on something. Now, if somebody is telling you, hey, here's the reference for this, this is what this means, then that's something that you can look into. But again, it's all about trying to make sure that we are actually understanding what's happening. I'm just saying. So, um, yes, that is my message for today. And uh, I know it's really easy to get discouraged and think, oh, this person is this and this person is that. But a lot of times you'll find, especially when you've been in the industry for a while, that, you know, things aren't always as they appear, right? And even somebody with one certification can know a lot and they can know plenty. Uh, and it really all depends on the individual and how much you study. Because again, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. <laughs> People get intimidated just with that, and I'll hear that later on in emails and tell me, Blue, you scared me because you said we have to know what doctors know. Yes, we do, because we're reading their documentation. We are reading, and we have to be able to interpret this stuff. And every provider is different. Every patient is unique. And so because of this, everybody's going to have a different experience with their provider. So each encounter has to be looked at. And, and it has to be analyzed in order to get the correct codes. So uh, with that said, <laughs> that's something that you need to know. Okay, guys, uh, but don't be discouraged. Uh, there's going to be things that you're going to pick up slower and there's going to be things that you're going to pick up faster. But think back to a time when you wanted to learn something and whatever it is, however, however you learned it, whether you learned it fast, because if you wanted to learn it, Remember, you learned it fast, right? Well, how did you learn that fast? Was it because you had a desire to learn it? Yes, you need that. <laughs> uh, 
But when you were learning it, was somebody showing you like how to do it or was somebody um, just giving you like a whole list of notes or whatever? And how, how did you learn that and kind of go back to that? Was it a visual presentation? Was it auditory? Was it, you know, that you're having to read and that's where you know, this is how I learn. Because if you don't know how you learn, it, that's what can make it very difficult. And especially in an industry where it's very reading heavy. We have a very reading heavy <laughs> field that we have to work in. But there, thanks to technology now, we have ways of listening. There's audio. Uh, there's always videos that you can watch like about surgeries. And oftentimes when we are coding for surgeries and we're having to see these big words and they're talking about this equipment and, you know, all the things that they use, it's very helpful if you can get a visual sense of what is happening. So that's why uh, when I started with uh, surgeries, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and it made a lot of sense. <laughs> and it, it was so much clearer to me once I saw it in action versus just reading it. And that's what helped me to understand, okay, this is what happens in this procedure. And if I saw that there was something missing, then I knew that's, hey, I need to ask and see if there's a query here. Um, and then sometimes it was like, okay, yes. Um, yeah, that part was missing because according to the procedure, you know, so that's where it's very helpful that you do your own research. We all have the ability to do this, guys. We all have that ability to be disciplined. Uh, but it really takes us and it takes motivating ourselves to get in there. Um, this feeling of inadequacy and, and feeling like you don't know what's going on will go away when you devote time to learning. That's the, that's the only thing. Nothing in this field will ever be given to you. Nothing in this field will ever be easy because it's always going to change. The guidelines update, the, uh, <laughs> the rules change. There's always new updates to these codes. And so that's where we always have to be ready for those changes. And it's a very rewarding field once you surrender to that, okay, now I know I have to study. And now I know where to find references and resources. Look on YouTube, look on cms.gov. And that's gonna be very, very eye-opening for you, so. That's just my advice anyway, but best of luck to you all out there. Like I said, don't get discouraged by what other people are doing. Uh, don't allow other students or other veteran medical coders to get in your head. You need to concentrate on what you're doing and what you have in front of you because again, their journey is not your journey. You are on two completely different paths. And when I hear people say, well, I heard this. Did you do your research? Did you find out if that's legitimate or that's just something that that person is saying? So another thing for you guys to think about. So um, with that, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, I hope you like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all next time. Bye.